Hello, friends. Did you ever have this happen to you? If you have, this just might help. Last year when I put out a video on my favorite costuming books, I got a lot of questions on how to scale up the patterns from those books. So today I'm going to walk you through my process of how to enlarge these patterns. There are three different types of pattern books that I'm going to be looking at today. One is books with grids, the second is books without grids, and lastly the diamond cutting system or the apportioning ruler method. Also just a heads up, if you are a beginner in sewing, I would probably recommend starting with a ready-made paper pattern versus enlarging patterns from books because there's a lot of extra steps that come with it and there's little to no sewing instructions. So if that is not something that you think would be a great fit for you, then I definitely recommend checking out ready-made patterns and I will leave a list below of some of the pattern companies that I've heard great things about. But that being said, if you are a fan of puzzling things out, just ignore what I've said and have fun. The first section I'm going to be focusing on is books with grids. And these include, but are not limited to, Patterns of Fashion, American Duchess Books, The Victorian Dressmaker, Period Costume for Stage and Screen, Tudor Taylor, and the last one on my list is Regency Women's Dress. Now the majority of grid books have a scale on them that tell you what size to scale the pattern to. From my experience, um, or at least looking through the books that I have, it's either one square equals one inch or one square equals two inches. So it's very important to figure out what your scale is before you start enlarging a pattern because that can make a big difference and cause some major issues down the line. I personally prefer to enlarge my grid patterns by hand, but it is possible to do it with a computer. And if you would like to see that method, I know Morgan did a video on it, I think about a year ago. So I will link that down below if you're interested in seeing that process. So the first pattern I'm going to be showing you how I enlarge is the 1790s bodice from the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. Because I have a Regency dress coming up and why not kill two birds with one stone? The first thing I do is either start along a straight line or at the top corner when scaling up a pattern. From there, I just count out the squares on the pattern, making dots and connecting them with straight or curved lines. The curvier the line, the more dots I use. If I want to be extremely meticulous, I will make a dot for every part of the pattern that crosses the line on the grid for a more exact pattern copy. And to double check that everything lined up nicely, I will connect the curves with a French curve for a nice smooth line. My French curve is one of my favorite tools when I'm drafting or enlarging patterns. And after I finish scaling up the bodice, I rough cut around all the pieces. Now because I know that I'm going to be altering the pattern, I traced out a second copy so that if I messed up any of the alterations the first time around, I could just trace off another pattern without having to rescale it up from the book. And while this does add an extra step, I think it also gives me peace of mind so I don't have to think about trying to scale everything up again if I've messed up the pattern with alterations. At this point, the bodice is ready for alterations, and I will show you that process in my Regency video. But if you are working with a larger pattern or you don't have tracing paper, I have explained how I scale up a larger pattern on plain paper, and that is actually over in the first video of my Victorian Constellation gown. So I've linked that down below, or you can click the link up above wherever 
it shows up. So if you want to see the process of enlarging a larger pattern, definitely go check that out. And I also actually show you how I enlarge the pattern to fit my body. So if you think that is useful, then uh, head over there once you finish this video. The next section is books without grids. So I have exactly three and a half of these books in my library and they are the cut of women's clothing, the cut of men's clothing, corsets and crinolines, and my half book is costume close up because it's actually kind of a mixture of grid and non-gridded patterns. I've included it in the non-gridded because there's more non-gridded. I have two different methods that I'm going to be showing you for how to scale up these books that are relatively simple but I do use a computer and Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I think there is a program that you can download that is similar to it that you technically should be able to get the same results. So hopefully this is helpful to you. So for the first method, I'm going to be scaling up this late 1820s corset from Corsets and Crinolines. The first step is scanning the pattern to my computer. Once it is scanned, I save it as a PNG file. Next, I open the file over in Photoshop and flip it if it isn't facing right side up. From there, I find the scale that is on the pattern. Sometimes it's a ruler and other times it's a mini grid. Then I carefully select the scale and copy it and open a new clipboard from image. In the new clipboard, you can see I only have the scales. So from there, I head over to image and click resize and then click image size, which brings up this screen. What I want to do now is change the width of the image size. So from the drop down menu, I select inches and then enter how many inches my ruler is. Then I change the pixel dimension 2% and wrote down the number that is in the width box. The number does change depending on the project, so don't be surprised if yours is different than mine. Going back to the other file, I clicked image, clicked resize, and then clicked image size. Then clicking on the pixel drop down menu, I changed it to percent again and entered the number that I wrote down and clicked OK. And at this point, the pattern should now be at the correct scale. Next, I saved it to my desktop or wherever you want to save your patterns. And then I made sure the format was Photoshop PDF. And then I opened it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader. And then printed it off using the poster page size. Now you want to make sure that it is scaled at 100%. And also, as a side note, it is very good practice to print off the scale first, just to make sure that it's coming out of the correct size. And lastly, I trimmed all the edges, lined up all the patterns, and taped everything together. So that is the first method. And if you aren't a fan of printing everything out and taping it all together, then you may prefer my second method. And that is turning a non-gridded pattern into a gridded pattern. The book I'm going to be using for that example is The Cut of Women's Clothing, which was actually the most requested book when I asked on Instagram what books you wanted help with enlarging. So hopefully this helps you. So I started the process the same way by scanning and opening it up in Photoshop. Now instead of scaling the grid this time, I copied and pasted the grid so it was on both sides of the pattern. From there, I added horizontal lines across the pattern, making sure that everything lined up. I then repeated that process with vertical lines, creating a grid that now matched the scale. I realized after finishing this that I did not make the lines thin enough, so I repeated the process again with thinner lines and it looked much better. And then I printed off the newly gridded pattern and scaled it up using the grid pattern method. The last method I want to tell you about is of the apportioning ruler method. 
But first, I'd like to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you've been following my channel over the past year, you already know that I've worked with Skillshare several times now, and I'm delighted that they want to work with me again. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, they are an online creative community that are helping to encourage millions of creative and curious people to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare is perfect for those that are wanting to develop their current skills or learn completely new ones. They have thousands of class topics that are sure to inspire, covering a wide variety of different topics, ranging from creative writing to graphic design, photography, entrepreneurship, and many, many more. Most classes on Skillshare are under an hour, so they can easily fit into any schedule. This week, I'm actually taking two different classes, both of them by Tabitha Park. The first one is called Self-Portraits, Telling Your Story, and the second one is Aperture, Creating Dramatic Blur. Now, I am always excited to learn more about my camera and how to tell a story with a photo, and already it has been coming in handy. If this has made you curious and you want to give Skillshare a try, the first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it is less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Now, as I mentioned, the final method that I'm going to be showing today is using apportioning rulers. Many people haven't actually heard of apportioning rulers, or if they've seen them, they have no idea how it works. Now, if you've been on Pinterest for any amount of time, you've probably come across those photos that have the patterns with the numbers next to them that looks like that's how you measure out the pattern. Now, apportioning rulers, it uses that, but it doesn't use a normal measuring tape. It uses a special ruler that corresponds with your bust, waist, and back length measurement. So I have four books in my library that use the apportioning ruler method, and they are The Voice of Fashion, Fashions of the Gilded Age, Volume 2, Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns, and 59 Authentic Turn of the Century Patterns. Now the only books in my collection that come with the rulers are The Voice of Fashion and The Fashions of the Gilded Age, and they're actually quite different from both books, so not everything that I'm showing you today will apply to every apportioning ruler book. And also if you're purchasing the Victorian authentic Victorian fashion patterns, you will need to purchase a second book to actually get the apportioning rulers. So the pattern I'm going to be enlarging using this method is from 59 Authentic Turn of the Century Fashion Patterns. And the pattern is on page 120. And it is this, oh my goodness, so fabulous and is not focusing on it at all. If I hide, will it focus on it? <laughs> Anyways, it is this fabulous uh, tailored suit from winter of 1896. So this is what we're going to be starting on today. So if you're intrigued, let's get started. So these are the different apportioning rulers. So to select the ruler that will draft your garment, you use your bust measurement, your waist measurement, and your back length. So my bust measurement in my undergarments for the 1890s is 38 inches. So I would go in here and I would look through here until I find the ruler that says 38 inches. So then I essentially print this out. So I just copied it and made a whole bunch of copies and printed it out. And so I have one long ruler. So these only go up to 10. So once I got to 10, I then started labeling it until I got to 20 and 30. It looks pretty crazy but it actually is fairly simple once you get the use to using this method. So first thing first, for the front piece, I'm going to need a ruler for my bust, and then I'm also going to be using a back length ruler, and to get that measurement, I take the measurement from the bone in the back of my neck down to my waist, and double that. And for me, that is 17, no, 17 and a half inches, 18 inches. Anyways, mine ends up being 36 inches. That is my back length ruler. So starting things off, I'm gonna be using my back length ruler to do the vertical line. And essentially all I do is just follow what the numbers say on here, mark it down, and then I square it off and do all the horizontal lines. So normally I wouldn't recommend doing this with a Sharpie. But because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, that is what I'm using this time around. So I am just going to start things off with drawing a vertical line 
so that I know everything will be straight when I start. So I've got my pattern squared off, starting from the top, and that is a quarter. And I like to mark which ones I'm working on. So if I get confused at all, I know what the last measurement I did was. So first one is a quarter, next is two. So I just go down and mark the two. Next is three. Find the three and mark it. Next is three and a quarter, mark it. And then just continue working my way down. In some cases, um, my ruler, I've only done two lengths of it. So you can copy more rulers so you have longer lengths. But in this case, this is just the 20 here. So I'm just gonna draw a line there and move this down so the 10 lines up with it. And that way I know I'm still going the correct distance. And so I can just continue. Okay, so those are all the vertical lines I need. And now I square off. Now I am gonna use a pencil for squaring off because it'll just be easier for me to follow along. Normally this is much easier if you have a square, the tea set ruler. If you have one of those, it's much easier because you can line everything up. But I do not have one of those handy at the moment, so this shall have to do. Now, if these aren't straight, these lines that you'll be doing horizontally will not be correct. So this is a big thing that you need to keep an eye on when you're doing this is making sure that these horizontal lines are straight because otherwise your pattern will be all skewed, which is not something you want. Okay, so now that I have all my vertical lines marked and all the horizontal lines drawn, now comes the fun part of marking out all the horizontal lines. So for this one, I need my bust measurement ruler. So for the horizontal marks, I am going to do them in pink, just so you can see the difference. So first one is this right here, and it is one and seven eighths. So you find the one and seven eighths. Now we go down to the next mark, and that is six. And go down to the next mark, that is three quarters, six, and then 10 and seven eighths. So this one has three different marks that I have to find. So three quarters. Six and 10 and seven eighths. And now I go down to the next one, which is three and that is five and a quarter. So essentially the pattern is all on there right now. You just can't see it. So now I just follow the instructions on here and line everything up. There are tiny little arrows like right there and right there and right there that tell you which way your French curve should be facing. So that is quite good to know when you are drawing the curves. If the arrow is pointing up, you want your French curve to be this way. If the arrow is pointing down, you want the French curve to be this way. So essentially, this is the point of the arrow and you always wanna work it towards that. So now it just comes the fun part of connecting all the dots and revealing the pattern.
Sometimes the curves are a little wonky. You may just have to figure that out in the mock-up stage. Just continuing to kind of finesse the edges. And there we go. That's all you have to do to use the apportioning ruler system. Now, when I use this for my constellation gown bodice, it fit pretty much right out of the book. I wasn't expecting it to fit that easily. There are some times where, of course, you will have to finesse it, but if you're adventurous, have a go. Um, it's definitely something that is fun to do. Anyways, I'm going to finish tracing out the rest of them and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. The sleeves for this coat are so majestic. They even take up more fabric than the front panel. So after the entire pattern has been traced out, I will leave this pattern as my master copy and then trace patterns from this. So this way, if I do an alteration to this, I don't have to worry if I completely mess it up. So I can just trace a new pattern from that. So that is really good. But essentially, it's completely done. And something else about these books, um, I don't actually know about the other ones, but the ones by Christina Harris do not have any instructions on how to put them together. So in that case, I usually pull out authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques if I can't figure it out. Uh, there is a lot of information in this book which tells you how to put things together. So yeah, that is my recommendation for these types of patterns and I really enjoy it. Something else actually about these books that I just forgot to mention. Some of these actually include the seam allowance on them. They have marked them in there. The thing is, is when you enlarge these patterns, the seam allowance is not actually three quarters of an inch. Like this one says three quarters, that one says three quarters. It's half an inch. They, they change depending on the pattern, so you have to keep an eye out for that. When you actually look at these pattern pieces, these will say that they're three quarters of an inch, but when I pull out a ruler, this is in fact an inch and a quarter. And the reason I got that measurement is because when you look at these up here, they actually have little marks as to where the seam allowance is supposed to start. When it comes to instances like that, I will usually trace off the pattern without the seam allowance and then add my seam allowance to the pattern afterwards and so everything is consistent. Once your patterns are scaled up, you will likely have to make them either larger or smaller depending on your body type, at least for the gridded or non-gridded patterns. The apportioning rulers are generally to your shape. There may be like a couple things you need to tweak, but they are very minor compared to having to make things much larger or much smaller uh, when using the gridded or non-gridded patterns. So once all the patterns have been kind of adjusted, you would then move them to the mock-up stage to make sure that everything fits together perfectly. And then you'd continue and make your beautiful outfits. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that has been informative or helpful at least in a little bit. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave them down below. And while I can't answer everyone, I will do my best. I would love to know which method you're excited to try out or which one you think would be your least favorite. I think my favorite would have to be the apportioning rulers because I love playing connect the dots. I mean, what can I say? I'm a kid at heart. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And thank you for watching, liking, and commenting. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you again in a few weeks with a new video. Bye!